Governor of the Central Bank, Dr. Indrajit Kumaraswamy, during his visit to Jaffna today, expressed the following views regarding the proposed amendments to the Monetary Act. But the new draft Monetary Law Act has a whole new section, a new section on macro prudential surveillance, which is focused entirely on identifying systemic risk in the economy. So this is not there in the old law. I mean, the central bank does this work, but it's not in the law. But now by law, the central bank will be required to monitor the whole system. The governor also responded to questions raised by journalists regarding the proposed construction of the economic corridors. central bank direct it's not something we know about. But I understand there is a master plan for Trincomalee, and then a master plan for Candy, uh, and then some development activity around the Kurunagal area, then the megapolis uh, program for the Western Province, and then of course you have the ha development around the Hamantada port. Meanwhile, the central bank has revised growth down to 3% from 4% as predicted earlier this year. Governor Dr. Indrajit Kumaraswamy made the following remarks at the fourth monetary review media briefing yesterday. So, as you know, it was projected to be 4% at the beginning of the year. So, ex post the uh, Easter bombings, we've revised it down to about 3%. In February this year, the central bank's forecast for Sri Lanka's growth stood at 5%. Uh, the central bank's models now, now uh, give the potential growth rate at 5%. We have been working on 5.75% on for some time, but currently we think the potential growth rate has come down to 5%. However, during the third monetary policy review in May, the central bank revised its growth forecast to 4%. Now, when we met last in, uh, in April, uh, we had projected growth for this year at 4%. Now, after the uh, event, Subsequently, in less than a month, ratings agency Moody's revised Sri Lanka's growth to 2.6% for 2019. From 5% in February to 3% in July, that has been the decline of Sri Lanka's economic growth during the year due to, clearly, due to physical, fiscal mismanagement. Now, for some additional news from the central bank, Governor Indrajit Kumaraswamy said yesterday that the five forensic audits regarding the issuance of bonds have started and will be completed by August or September. Joining us this evening is Faraz Shaukutali. Faraz, good evening. Uh, good evening, Zenit. Now, Faraz, these uh, forensic audits, they've taken quite a long time. What's your take on this? Uh, well, it's, um, it's um, especially uh, vexatious and tiresome and uh, the people get uh, a feeling that this is not uh, going to happen, although uh, the governor, uh, Dr. Indrajit Kumar Swami, has continuously said that it will be done um, and he's now obviously given an indication that it's going to be done in August, uh, by August. Uh, this is an ex uh, extremely uh, tiresome wait. And um, uh, we, uh, the question that people ask is why it's taking so much of time. And um, uh, Zunit, as you know, uh, the governor has indicated that it's going to be costing uh, 700 million rupees for these five, uh, presumably for these five uh, forensic audits. Um, but um, our sources tell us that the final price is likely to be in the region of 930 million rupees. Uh, five uh, audits are being done by the one firm and one from uh, another. And uh, the, um, the, the, the cost uh, has been so much, people say, um, and experts opine that this is because the central bank is going back so far into, uh, into the past uh, in, a, in an attempt uh, for God knows what. There is no uh, possible rationale to look at bonds that have long expired or long matured long time ago. Um, there has been concern, the Prime Minister said so himself in Parliament in, back in March 2015, that there, he felt that there was a, that he said there was uh, definite uh, abuses and so on, 
and that uh, this was very partially given and there was no impartiality and therefore he changed the system. But during that time, if we can remember, uh, going back, uh, the, the Prime Minister is clearly speaking about the past as in during the Rajapaksa years in which uh, Ajit Nibad Cabral was the governor. Well, that, that's fine if we were to go back up to that sort of time, to say 2005, because of course uh, from 2006 onwards, uh, the Rajapaksa government uh, issued bonds for five years, eight years and even 30 years and clearly some of those will still be very much live and there's no harm in looking into those things to find out if indeed, as the Prime Minister said, that there was some sort of uh, fraud or some sort of departure from due process. Of course, the Prime Minister knows all about uh, departures from due process. Now, that, that's, that's the situation. Um, there is no harm in going back uh, into the past, but not beyond, surely not beyond uh, 2005 into the past. Uh, we have to bear in mind that the average length of a bond uh, uh, has been uh, approximately two years and four months. Um, and so the longest would be, let's say, three years. It doesn't make sense unless, of course, this is yet another attempt to filibuster and to delay a final resolution into Sri Lanka's greatest financial scam perpetrated upon the people. And, of course, we have to bear in mind always that it was the EPF that suffered the greatest single loss, which the Presidential Commission of Inquiry estimated at 8,500 million rupees. We have to bear in mind that the losses will have to include the, our sources say around 930 million, uh, the central bank have said 700 million, but it will have to add all these losses, all these costs to the ultimate loss caused by the bond scam.